All right, it's time for another math easy solution. Here we'll discuss. Well, I'll do an example on the precise definition of the limit, uh, which I did in my earlier video. The precise definition, I went over it. I'll just recap right now and do an example just to help better illustrate it. So basically, the precise definition states: Let f be a function defined on some open interval, meaning it doesn't have to equal on the. It doesn't have to be defined on the endpoints, and that contains a number a, except possibly at a. So it doesn't have to be defined there. Just the limit has to be there then we can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l and we write it like this limit x approaches a of f of x equals l if for every number epsilon which is greater than zero there is a number uh, delta which is also greater than zero such that you have this a difference between f of x minus l absolute value is less than this uh, epsilon whenever you have x minus a is less than this and to help illustrate it, uh, I'll just go through an example. Yeah, so this is an example, and also if you watch the uh, other video, video link below to get a better idea of uh, graphically uh, what this epsilon and delta are. But now let's go through this example here, one here. Example one just states, use a graph to find a number delta such that you have this one right here, x cubed minus 5x plus 6 uh, minus 2 is less than 0.2 whenever you have this x minus 1 is less than delta right here. Now this is exactly uh, this is this is exactly what this precise definition limit is. But now we're using numbers in this case, and f. And when we look at just compare this to the definition, we have this is going to be f of x. So f of x equals two x cubed, yeah, minus five x plus six. So that's f of x right there. And then now this two, this is just going to be l. That's the limit because if we with this example, we could just plug in. Well, this one here, a is equal to one. That's exactly this one right here. Uh, this point two is equal to, we'll just call this, this is, this is called epsilon. And then if we plug in f of one right here, this is gonna, we're gonna get the limit right there, which is, this is one cubed minus five times one plus six. So this is just gonna be, well, one minus five is negative four plus six equal to two. So then yeah, this is equal to L right here, the limit here. But now we're just going to use the graph to find this number right now. So yeah, so we're just going to find this delta right here. Now from the earlier video, uh, recall what this epsilon means is that if, if this... Now uh, before I illustrate this graphically, like the question says, I'll, I'll just go further into what this means. Well, this uh, if all this is saying is that if you have f of x here, minus the limit has to be, it just has to be less than 0.2. You could also write this as f of x has to be in between, well, 2 plus 0.2 and 2 minus 0.2 right here. Or, you, yeah, then you'll just have 1.8 is less than f of x, and this is less than 2.2. So what this is saying is, let's say if, if f of x is equal to 1.9, then 1.9 minus, well, minus 2, the absolute value, this one's just going to be equal to 0.2. One and this is less than 0.2, so that's all, all it's saying. So this is all, the requirement has to be in between these right here. So now, if you were to graph this uh, in, with Google right here, this is the f of x right here. This is then you also graph y is 2.2, the upper limit, and y is 1.8, the lower limit, and then also the limit of y is equal to two. So we get something like this right here. And now the idea is is that we have to find out where x has to be or or between what delta range or just what range of x to get this requirement. That's basically just if you just draw vertical lines down from here and here, then we will see what that range is. So now to illustrate this further, I've just taken a screenshot of it just to show you what I mean. So now this is our, our delta, this is our L right here. And our, so our f of x has to be somewhere in between either here or here. So that could be f of x, this could be f of x, etc. As long as it's in between this 2.2 and 1.8. And this this is yeah, this upper one is also this is this is also epsilon right here. And then this is uh, this is just 2 minus epsilon is 2 plus epsilon, etc. So now to find out what the range of x is to have this requirement, all we just do is draw vertical lines whenever this intersects. Because we know at and then so yeah, if we just drag this uh, at where the limit is and then go down to the x value, this is the one or this is our a value. And now we have it, this part's right here, it's not symmetric right here. This and, and this, it's not the same size, or we'll just say not symmetric. Yeah, it's not symmetric, because in my earlier videos, I, I just dealt with deltas that are symmetric. In, in this case, now we're going to have, this is going to be our, let's just call this delta 1, and this difference right here is delta 2 right here. Because remember, all we're trying to do is, because uh, when we look at this something like here, if we put, get, pick a value of, of f of x right here, if we just go all the way right, 
it has to be within this uh, this range. So all that we're saying is that the x values has to be somewhere in between here and here. It's, yeah, it has to be in between these two limits because uh, if we drag this up and go left, it will be in between right here. So if this is delta one, at this point right here, this is this is a scale of point twos everywhere. So this is going to be point nine one roughly, and at this point right here, it's going to be well around one point. 1.12 right here so this gives a delta 1 of of 1 minus 0 0.91 equaling to point uh, this is point zero 0.09 and then delta 2 this just equals to 1.12 minus 1 or point 0.12 so now we have to see which deltas are we gonna pick well because it's not symmetric we need to pick one of them and we have to pick the lower one because if we didn't well if we pick point 0.12 um, yeah, yeah, if we put po 0.12 and if we looked at the left side right here, so we have 1 minus 0.12, this equals to 0.88, and that's going to be somewhere right right over here. And then if we, if we pick this value of x, then we, if we drag it up, it will be somewhere over here, and then this one will go uh, somewhere over here, and this is above the 2.2, and this is not... Uh, part of a requirement. So this this we can't pick this number, so we have to pick this 0 0.09. And so the, our delta is going to be 0 0.09. And then if we look right here, or yeah, 0 0.09, because if we even if we go out of this side, if this is if this is one right here, 0 0.09 would be it's just 1.2468. Uh, so it should be somewhere around here. Yeah, so it should be somewhere around right here. And then if we just drag it up and go left, this is within our uh, requirement that was given in, uh, in the question right here. So then our delta is just going to be right here. Uh, delta is 0 0.09 or we could also pick anything less than this. Yeah, and the reason we could pick any number less than this because if you just look at it, if it, if it's less than 0.9 let's say right here this is 0 0.2 uh, as a delta it's still going to be within this range. It's going to be over here and here and go left it's going to be still within this set range right here. So yeah so this is our answer yeah, and thus we could write it as this fx is less than 2, or this x2 minus 5x plus 6. Le uh, minus 2 is less than 0.2 whenever x minus 1 absolute value or distance is less than 0 0.09. Or we could pick any number less than 0 0.09. We'll still get it right. Now I just want to make uh, one uh, final note on this. It's just, uh, it's important, this is an important note. That the graphical procedure given above it just gives, it, you know, it's basically an illustration of the definition for uh, epsilon is 0.2, but it does not prove, or you know, put in quotation, prove that the limit is 2 here. A proof has to provide, uh, well, basically a delta for every epsilon, regardless of how small, just has to be just still greater than, greater than zero. And I'll and I'll show the, how to do this in an, in next video, but for a different example, just basically how to prove that the limit exists right here. This this one is just illustrating that it is, that it should be, and you could just look at it right now. If you just get smaller and smaller, it's just going to get smaller and smaller. Uh, this uh, this one, uh, if we get smaller and smaller, uh, closer to the a, the one or the a, this is going to be smaller, and smaller to basically close to zero right here. But then uh, next video, I'll prove this using using actually uh, numbers and 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 basically gra like instead of just graphically or just subjectively saying it, but I'll I'll use it mathematically. Well, that's all for today. Remember, you can download these notes in the Dropbox link below. If we learned, and stay tuned for another math. E